today from Ford Field in Detroit. It's a special Thanksgiving Day presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. Detroit Lions taking on the New York Jets. Coming to you from the venue that hosted the Super Bowl back in February of 06. Welcome to Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Today, our holiday coverage kicks off with a good one here as it'll be the New York Jets taking on the Detroit Lions. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they're hot as can be. Winners of eight of their last nine games. I don't know if you'd call this start a surprise exactly, but they've proven that they're going to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. It's been a tradition since the early days of the NFL, and we're off on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. And we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff. This will be a touchback. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. And leading them out is their fifth-year quarterback. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an interception. Pick. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. First run of the game for Jameer Gibbs, the Alabama product. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27th. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Pick it. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the Jets will take over first and 10. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. And trotting out there, leading them is their fourth-year quarterback. I like this guy. And the reason I do, he tends to stay on an even keel. Doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed, take what the defense gives him, and then he can strike at times. Had a touchdown pass. Yes, he had an interception last week, but he found a way for his team to win. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 17 carries, 70 yards. And even though it's a short week, running backs love when they're in a groove, and that's exactly where he is right now. He's hoping to feast a little bit more here on Thanksgiving. Now Clark looking to throw on second down. They're able to complete this one to Tyler Conklin. Call it a gain of a yard, and third and eight now. You talk about this Lions defense. They're in the spot statistically that you don't want to be in against the pass. Number 32 in the league, dead last. That was a nice play right there, but overall this season, it's been an absolute disaster. A total lack of communication on the back end. They need a leader who can put this team, this unit, on his shoulder pads and carry them to the right spots. Looking for Cooper, that's complete. 
And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The Jets at 9-1 on the year. And they come in feeling pretty good after back-to-back -back victory, CD. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the run, it's Bush. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Second down and three. They'll keep it in the hands of Bush. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Looking to throw. Clark able to find the open man. That's complete. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 37. Defense was expecting run and their delta pass of over 15 yards. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. And from the gun, here's a And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. They work now on second and nine. Back to throw. Clark. Throwing quickly to Wilson. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 25-yard line. Looking to throw. Clark under a heavy rush, and down he goes. That sack courtesy of Jack Campbell. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. This has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. Back to throw. Clark, a short throw to Conklin, the tight end. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. To throw on third down. Clark, and that's going to be incomplete. The contact there, enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. Against a team coming off a win, just as your team did the previous week, you talk about being physical all game long. Sometimes being physical is just being on the spot and helping force the incompletion. Now the Jets will call on a field goal unit here. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. They come off a victory over the weekend, but now the quick turnaround here for this Thursday night game. How does that affect how teams like this approach these short turnarounds? Well, wins and losses always factor into, you know, how you're getting ready for the next game. But equally as important when you have the short turnaround, what is your injury situation? Are you losing key guys? And if so, how well have the backups prepared for this? Because you don't have much time to get them ready. They have to be ready before this week in order to play well in this game. Second and nine. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. He's airing it out for Williams. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. 
And the Jets are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. Well, his arm strength, never an issue, but this one winds up in the wrong hands. Oh, the coverage here is just terrific because when it's done really well, sometimes you can't distinguish whether it's the receiver or the defensive back the ball's intended for. He actually ran with him in perfect motion and able to make a big-time play. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. They're riding a two-game winning streak into this Thursday nighter. How easy is it when you're on a roll to stay on a roll given the quick turnaround? Well, you would think it'd be pretty easy because everyone's locked in in practice and meetings because everyone feels good about themselves. And for coaches, this is where they have to tell themselves, don't add too much, don't worry about game plans as much as players. So look at your play sheet and think, give it to the guys who play best and don't worry about the rest of it. And he's got Cooper on the out route. That's complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Looking to throw. Clark. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. Jack Campbell. Now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. They were trying to set up a screen there, but that one just too slow in developing. Yeah, too slow in developing and well read because that ends up being a bad feeling for the quarterback. When he's got no blocking in front of him, his guys are just going to let defenders go, and they're coming for him. So if it's not there, you just got to throw the ball at the turf at your running back's feet. Now the Jets send on Braden Mann to punt. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and the Lions will take over. And Detroit getting set to go now. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. The clock running here, under a minute to go now in the first quarter of a 3-0 game. Off play action, pick it. Going underneath, Gibbs has it. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They get to throw on first down. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action now from Detroit, and it's the homestanding Lions who have the football. Second down and a yard as they've got it as we resume action. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back, and he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Pick it back to throw. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. The Lions passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. Pick it right back to the air again. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. We saw a lot of that a week ago defensively from him, AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Just always seems to be around the football. I like your observation there. Understands the game, understands positioning, can put himself in the right spot, and then make a play on the football. On second down, here's Gibbs. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. 
pick it. He'll look to throw it. And a quick throw here. That's complete. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that's going to make it fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Chad Ryland now on for the field goal. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx it. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The offense for the Jets ready to take over. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. You know, thinking of this Thanksgiving Day game, Charles, for years we've heard the talk, why don't we open up these Thanksgiving Day games instead of just being Detroit and Dallas every year, give other teams a shot to host? I know you're kind of like me, a bit of a traditionalist, but what do you have to say to that, CD? I think it's a great argument, and the league could support it quite well, where you could move games to different spots and still be very successful on Thanksgiving Day, but you're exactly right. I am a traditionalist. I really don't want Detroit and Dallas to give up those slots. I like the fact that we watch them each and every year, but what I really like is that the league added a third game in 2006, and usually it's division rivals, but that's the third one of the day, and it caps off a great day of football. On second down, it's Abana Kanda. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. And they'll go again with a band of Kanda. And he's going to get it across the midfield stripe into Lion territory. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and three. Off play action. Clark. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Armstrong. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's pulled for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. On the handoff, Abana Kanda. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. There's a second and nine now from the 29. <laughs> Operating from the gun, Clark. A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 15-yard line. The give now to Abana Kanda, and he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Now Clark to throw, to throw on second down. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Here comes third and about a foot. Back to throw. Clark. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. 
up, and he just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They'll go for it. It's a band of Canada. And this will depend on the mark. I'm not sure he pushed the line forward. And indeed, he did not. They stop him. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. First and 10, here's Pickett. Well, this is caught by Williams. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Pickett will look to throw it here. He gets this out wide to Gibbs. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Here's Pickett. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have a Lions first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard game there on third and two. First and 10, here's Gibbs. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. So we're at halftime here in the annual Thanksgiving game in Detroit. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And a happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. As we look ahead to two more games later today and then a full slate coming up this weekend. Some good games starting in the early window on Sunday, and one of the big ones features the New England Patriots as they get set to match up with the Buffalo Bills. In the late afternoon games, the place to be might very well be Denver, Colorado, where it'll be the Broncos taking on the Miami Dolphins. And finally, on Sunday night football, should be a good one there between the Carolina Panthers all right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Second half ready to roll. Two field goals, a combined output in half number one. Could be first touchdown wins. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Now the Jets going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the gift off of his backside and deep into the secondary. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Looking to throw. Clark, he finds his man complete. It's Armstrong. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Off the play fake. Clark. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Here's second and 10. To throw again. Clark. He finds his man complete. It's Armstrong. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 
And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Armstrong. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with a pick. And the Lions are going to have it here as they'll start at their own seven. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. So we get a look at the Lions' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They got the ball now following a big play, keeping the other guys out of the end zone. Now they'll start deep in their own territory, first and 10. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jordan Whitehead. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Well, their defense got them the football with an interception. They trot out there, Charles, in the very first play. They give the football right back. <laughs> Brand, I almost expect you coming like an auctioneer. We've got two, we got two. Do I hear three? Remember, it was two in a row. Would we hit three in a row? Because these offenses, they've got to be a little bit more careful as they go forward. These defenders, they're locked in and really focused. Here's Clark on first and 10. He's got a man complete. It's Amari Cooper. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. Second down and four. On the ground, it's Banacanda. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 47 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. From the two now, second and goal. Abana Kanda is in. Touchdown, Jets. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line, because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Now the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. The Jets kick team out now to boot this one away. And they will wrangle it down a couple of yards shy of the 30. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10.
Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. A big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Pickett sets up play action. Now he'll take a shot for Peoples-Jones. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And only a couple there as he'll take this up to the 47. The Jets will bring in a nickel set here as they try to stop this third down. Now pick it. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. That goes in the category of a play that the defense is going to cherish and excites them. A completion, yes, you give up the pass, but no gain. I mean, that's exactly what you want on defense. And sets up the fourth down. Here comes the Lions punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and the Jets' offense will be backed up to start this drive as they've got it first and 10. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They'll begin on the ground here with a band of Kanda. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. A band of Kanda once again. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Abana Kanda on first and ten. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it in every position, and we just saw him there. Some linebackers can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Third and 12. Back to throw. Clark. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Here's the Jets punter now, as he's on to kick it away. That's taken it around the 40. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. 
And off to Gibbs, headed right here. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. We're on to the fourth here on Thanksgiving Day. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. That's caught, it's Sam Laporta. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Gibbs straight ahead, and they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they've stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Second down, and they go back to Gibbs. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. The third down now. And those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. St. Brown has it near the sideline. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that'll bring him back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the air. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. So here are the Jets now to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and ten. Throwing to start the drive. Clark. Now a leaping catch. He's got it. A good pick up there. 26 yards. And these guys serve. They're not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Off the bootleg, Clark. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that will bring up second down. Looking to throw. Clark, and he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 26. Off play action. Clark. Throw left side complete. That's Armstrong. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. And the Lions are right back in this football game. 
A seismic shift in momentum here in the fourth quarter. That's the break that the defense needed. And you know as well as I do, people are going to question the play call in that situation. Sometimes you have to question the execution, not necessarily the call. And in this case, those defenders found a way to give their team a chance. Drive starts with a run from Gibbs. And good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. From the 23, this is second and three. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Here's Pickett on second down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Looking to throw, Pickett. Got his man, it's Williams. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. From the 41, here's second down and two. In motion right, Peoples-Jones. Pickett looking to throw on second down. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Back to throw. Pick it. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch called, it's taken in right at the 20 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt and they will take over first and 10. And the Jets set to take the field. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is gonna break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive, he'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. So nothing doing there, and it'll be second down. Back to throw, Clark. Well, this is taken in, it's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. I just love how they're going about trying to finish off this game. This is not an offense that's going to go into its shell. They're going to keep exploiting weaknesses where they sail. And that's a huge pickup there with the game in the balance. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Winds up a very good call there defensively to challenge that one, as that now will wind up an incomplete pass. Clark now on third down. He's going to take another shot here. And that's caught inside the 35. 
And he steps out of bounds, but not before he gets inside the 35. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's a Banacanda. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. It's second down. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts. On third down. Cooper, and he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This will get the lead up to seven. And his kick is good. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13 to six. From a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet. Okay, being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. So now the Lions down 13-6, a minute 39 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Looking to throw here. Pick it. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. A few things better than a big man interception. You can always tell right when they get the football, there's that level of excitement and nervousness and also like, what the heck do I do with this thing? <laughs> and you say, no better sight? Well, not for the quarterback to just throw it. It's bad enough to throw a pick, but to throw one to the big guy? But you're right about that. Now what do I do with it? But what's fun about it is, you know they're going to be in the film room after this ball game telling all their teammates, Maybe I should shift over to offense. I've got skills. What do you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I always find myself cheering for them after they intercept it. Unfortunately here, he couldn't make it into the end zone. On second down, it's Cooper. Down right around the 25. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. The Jets with victory seemingly in hand. They take the knee. So it's a victory here for the New York Jets. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So for the Jets, they get win number 10 on the year as they move to 10 and 1. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week. Meanwhile, for the Lions, it was a win they needed to turn the season around, but instead, they fall to 5 and 7. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.